Webflow is very powerful, but if you don't know how to actually properly use Webflow, Webflow will use its powers against you, making your life down the line very difficult, causing headaches and even performance issues. In this video, we're gonna cover five Webflow mistakes that absolutely everybody makes so that you can still build your websites in lightning speed, but you're gonna save yourself and your client a massive headache along the way. Let's get into it. The first mistake that I see a lot of Webflow developers making is designing directly in Webflow. Now Webflow is made and was built as a building product, a building service. And the issue is if we start designing directly in Webflow, we don't have as much control of the design and iterations with clients that we could have if we designed first in something like Figma or Framer even or Sketch. So here I have an example of a hero header and we've got text on the left and an image on the right. But how can I see what this would look like or what the client would want it to look like if maybe the text was in the middle? So if I go ahead and move this to the middle, then maybe without an image, I need to move this here and then I move, need to move this here and then it actually needs to be aligned vertically. So you can see that it's, it's starting to be just a headache for me in terms of time and probably also for the client. So what I like to do and what I prefer doing and what I recommend that everybody does is to start directly in Figma. And this is the same exact hero header here, except for some copy differences, but whatever. So if I wanted to change the text to be centered here, all I have to do is either hide this image that we've got here, then we can maybe move this to the center. And it's a very similar process here, but because this is designed as a design software, things move a lot faster. So we can see how fast that took, how easy it was to change the layout. We can even duplicate this and we can then change the layout to be much larger. So maybe this can be around 104 pixels. You know, we can start to iterate and change how this design looks. So as always, I recommend building in Webflow, but designing in Figma first. So we always have the iteration done out of the way. We have all the designs that we want to have, and then we move into Webflow and then we settle things in actual code. Now, the second tip that is most important here definitely is to not use columns when you are building. So in my wrapper here, I'm gonna go ahead and add a grid, and then I'm also going to add in a column so we can see what the difference would be if I can type. So here I have a grid and then a column. The issue with columns is we are quite limited by the capabilities of what the columns can do. If I wanted to add in a third column, well then that's fine. We go into the column options and we can add four, maybe even five if I can find it, maybe even six, and then we can just start to add and add and add and add in this way, but it only goes into a certain point. Now what happens if I want to go ahead and add a second row? I would need to duplicate this column row like this, and then do the same thing again. So you can see that it just becomes very difficult to do this responsively. And even in the lower breakpoints, it becomes even harder. So what I recommend to do, apart from not using columns in general, is going to be to use the grid instead. So you can see that if we wanted to edit the design of the grid, it's only through the grid editor, and it's not in the settings of Webflow or anything like that. And we can easily change this by adding columns here, adding more rows. And now we can see how much control we have over our layout and our design compared to using columns. So you can see that the, the max amount of columns that we could have using columns was six. Well, guess what? Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. You know, we can add as many as we need and that's not limited by the actual columns. The third mistake that I see a lot of people doing is not using the brand new WebP image feature. So in Webflow, they just added this brand new feature where you can select your images or your assets by going into the side panel here. You can select all the images, but make sure that it's only PNGs, JPEGs, actual typical images, not like SVGs, not already WebP images. Select the images that you want to convert to WebP and then you click on compress. Now you see that you'll get this pop-up here. This will compress and convert the selected assets to WebP. You go ahead and click compress. It'll take a second. And once we see that the images are ready, we see that they have been converted to WebP. So what this does, it allows the website to read your images much faster and display them without taking a toll on your website. And it compresses the size of the image to a fraction of what the JPEG or PNG would have been. The fourth mistake that I see a lot of people doing, and this one specifically grinds my gears and it'll grind a lot of people's gears if you work in a team or if you work with other designers and developers and you're passing on projects, is not properly naming your div blocks. So you can see here on my left on the navigator that my divs and my layers are all named relatively well. So we've got text box 
text block two here and hero heading and it's not necessarily perfectly named but we can see we've got left we've got a button we've got image five we've got hero we've got navbar two so we can see that these elements are properly named for the most part obviously but what would happen is instead of adding text here we change this to div one two three and if you can imagine we have maybe hundreds of different layers and we don't have any way of knowing which layer we actually need to look at or find in this massive navigator apart from just being able to click into the element that we need, maybe using shift command X, we can see the X-ray view, and then maybe we can see what the, what the individual layers look like. But the problem is if we can't actually find the correct layer to change or to work with or to, to do something with, then it'll take us a lot longer and it'll be a much bigger pain in the ass, especially if you are working with other people and other developers. If I get handed a project that has div 123, div 124, div 125, instead of just left div, right div, center div section one section you know it's much easier to read that rather than just a massive jumble of different div blocks so make sure that you name them properly using proper naming conventions the fifth mistake that i see a lot of people doing while we are in the x-ray mode here is this exact problem here we can see that we're adding padding and margin to the child elements rather than the parent element so in this case i wanted to give a little bit of space between the text and the image on the right side and i think that's completely fine if you want to do that but in this case what we should be doing instead of adding margin to our text we can go ahead and reset that is that we should be adding padding to our parent element so div123 the one that we just renamed let me actually rename that to text we should actually be giving padding to our block here and then we can see that all the elements inside of that parent div now have that same padding instead of maybe having this one be for rem we can reduce that so now we can see that all the child elements have the same exact spacing and padding and you don't need to think and worry did i add by mistake 4.1 4.2 to the child element and not four exactly four that we wanted to in this case if you know that you only want to have four rem of padding for the text block the the hero heading and then the text block too and it's much easier to add it to the parent element rather than anything inside of it. The last mistake that I see a lot of people doing is not styling the global elements rather than the individual text block one, two, three, four, five that we have in Webflow. So here in front of me, we have four different headings. We have heading one, two, three, and then four, but we see that our H1 here, as, as long as it says H1 here, we see that it has a class name of hero heading and it has a whole different bunch of styling. We've got white 3.7 REM, a different font even. So what is going on here? The main issue that we see here is not actually styling the global HTML tag of H1 rather than styling the individual element inside our hero heading here, for example. So the best thing that we can do for a massive project is to style the actual global heading like we have here. So if we do want it to be this Frank Roll Libre font, then it's much easier just to change that one individually. And then it'll change everything in our project. So we can then change here, make this H1, 3.7 REM like we have in the larger one here. And then for height, we can change this to one. And here we see that we still have the problem that the H2, the H3, and the H4 are still in this weird gray standard color. So an easy way to fix that is go into the global body class and change this color to be white. We can see that automatically all of our color will then change for every other text block that isn't already overridden in the project. We can also change the text here to be Frank Rule Libre. And again, this will only change it if we haven't already overridden it. So if we want to take this back to the base, we'll see that it automatically changes it back to what we have in the body tag, which is great. So that is all for today. If you guys did learn something in this video, then please do let me know down below, leave a like, subscribe to Flux. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.